story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there and welcome to Call TV News with me, Sabena Izoku. Petroleum Resources Minister Desiane Alice Madweke has meanwhile assured Nigerians that issues that led to the fuel shortage have been resolved. She disclosed that at a meeting that was held with various oil workers, union ended on a positive note. The minister spoke on the sidelines of a meeting on power sector reforms at a presidential villa. At this point in time, I think all short-term planned projects uh, that are to underpin that 5,000 megawatts are progressing um, steadily. Uh, we have commenced construction of the bypass pipeline with uh, national, uh, our gas company. I think also NPDC is carrying out uh, work over of wells. Even CEPLAT is making very good progress at this time uh, with the installation of the gas plant at Obe. It is also um, working on a number of wells for us. So we have put in place all the um, parameters to ensure that in the short to medium term, we are in, in fact able to uh, support our 5,000 megawatt uh, commitment. So it is our hope, it is still our hope of course, that the gas pipeline sabotage um, will be one that is mitigated more and more and consistently as we go over the next uh, 12 to 24 uh, months. But it is a security issue and we are doing everything to support the security uh, services. One soldier was killed while four others were injured in an ambush at Beni Sheikh in Bornu State. The Nigerian troops, however, fought through the ambush to dislodge its insurgents, according to military authorities. Defense headquarters said through its Twitter handle that four motorcycles used by the terrorists were captured. The military promised to release more information on the ambush that took place last Wednesday. Senate Minority Leader George Akume is opposed to President Gulag Jonathan's request for a $1 billion loan to fight insurgency in the Northeast. He told journalists in Abuja that there is no need to borrow in order to fight insurgents if the country's resources are properly managed. Akume recalled that Nigeria, under former head of state, retired General Yakubu Gawan, fought a three year long civil war without borrowing. I want to say, and very frankly, and rightly I believe, that we don't need to go a borrowing because we want to fight terror. We have proved funds for fighting terror on the recommendation of relevant uh, government machinery charged with protecting us. I also want to say that if we manage our resources properly, prudently, and with every uh, respect to accountability. We shouldn't be talking about borrowing one billion dollars to fight terror. I, attaching this thing to terror doesn't make much sense to many of us. During the civil war that lasted for three or more years, General Gowan was able to take us through that bitter and unfortunate era without borrowing a cobo. So what are we talking about? Borrowing money now. The federal government has directed heads of various institutions in the country to ensure maximum security in their schools. Education Minister Ibrahim Shakarao ensued the director when he led a government delegation on sympathy visit to Kano State. He also expressed hope that the attack would not discourage Nigerians, especially in the northern region, from going to school. Shakarao, who spoke at a meeting with the provost of the school, also visited Maritala Mohammed Teaching Hospital, where many of the injured students are receiving treatment. 
Security is the business of everybody. The federal government, the state government, the local government, the communities, uh, the elders, society, everybody should be concerned. It is unfortunate that the trend we are experiencing is institutions of learning are being targeted. This is most unfortunate, and I'm sure all of us, state and federal government, and all security agencies and all concerned will have hands on deck to ensure maximum safety of life and properties in our institution. And as I said earlier on, we will see this as yet another challenge to whoever is concerned to further go back to drawing board to ensure additional strategies to detect and protect the lives and properties of the young ones in our institutions. The National Emergency a management agency has promised to rehabilitate the lecture hall affected by the bomb and gun attack at the Federal College of Education, Kanu. He also pledged to replace chairs and tables that were destroyed in the course of the attack. Nema Zonu coordinator Musa Ilala made a promise when he visited the bomb scene. The state emergency management agency, along with other stakeholders, were at hand and they were able to evacuate some of this all of the victims that were injured to the hospital and also the dead ones. So we are this morning at the Federal College of Education to see for ourselves what damage has been done to the theater and also we are now at the hospital to also see this injured. And uh, our assessment is that we, in as much as we are concerned about this uh, increasing uh, attacks on uh, public uh, schools, we think we should ask the public to be very, to be very vigilant so that this thing will not occur again. And uh, I can assure you that we have done an assessment. We will now go back to our head office and report what we have seen, so that what uh, intervention the federal government through the National Emergency Management Agency can offer to the school, uh, to the college education, and also to the hospital here. Now let's take a short break, and when we return, Court TV News on the R continues. Stay with us. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Welcome back. As the September 22nd date for primary and secondary schools resumption in the country draws near, authorities of both the private and public schools have assisted on adequate preparation and appropriate health facilities for checking the Ebola virus disease among pupils and their teachers. The date, which has become controversial amongst school owners, administrators, teachers and parents, has remained a subject of discussion within and outside the public domain. Omotayo Alo has the rest of the story. With just few days to the controversial September 22nd resumption date, the course that appears not clear as arguments from all sides of the bargain continue. Lagos State Chairman of the Nigerian Union of Teachers, Adisha Goraim, says the schools will only commence the new academic session when the safety of teachers and pupils are guaranteed. A government official called me just yesterday that they will be distributing some gadgets today. If we move around, we discover that those gadgets are in post and in their right quantity, we will, the school will open. Okay. 
A principal of the Lagos-based private school, Adekunle Agbelu, stressed the importance of putting in place adequate measures to properly care for the pupils, the teachers and owners of the schools. I think the most important thing is that let's get do the right thing. Let uh, the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, let them go around schools, see how prepared they are for this resumption, how they prepared they are for our children that are coming to school to be well protected, not staying at home. Because I tell you, if these students will stay at home, nothing will be done. But knowing the fact that they are in school, then people will do everything to make sure that these children are, are, are safe. For his part, the treasurer of NUT, Kola Waliamao, told the line of his chairman, but added that authorities should ignore the calls for hasty resumption without first putting safety measures in place. There is also a moral demand on us to protect the puppies and students we teach. Because in the event there is an outbreak, among the rank and file of the pupils and students, definitely teachers cannot begin to celebrate. It will spread. As controversy persists over the issue, it is not clear if the September 22nd resumption date would be adhered to by all. Omotayo Alo, Core TV News, Lagos. A related issue, the special advisor to the Lagos state government has raised fears over the September 22nd school's resumption date. Special Advisor to the State Governor on Public Health, Yawande Adishina, says there is no cause for alarm as the stage is set for students to resume in what she described as a well-equipped environment. She made this known at a sensitization and enlightenment seminar organized for over 3,000 teachers by the State Ministry of Health. Once again, Omataya Aloha has the story. The sensitization seminar was targeted at training teachers on how to manage deadly Ebola and arm them with adequate information for students and awareness of the virus. Teachers present at the training state readiness for this government to contain the virus. There is no Ebola in Lagos State again. Like what they taught us now is sure the last person has been discharged last week. So we are, Lagos State is free of Ebola virus. And I'm confident that with the knowledge we gained today, the Ebola disease would be out of all the schools and the students can Hello. learn effectively without any fear of the disease spreading in Lagos State. These government personnel say the training transcends the fight against Ebola. One can say without any fear of contradiction that we are almost 99%. You know, I am sure that our schools, our surroundings are safe and secured from Ebola. We are saying that teachers should know what to do. Students themselves, you know, the children in school should know what to do, particularly how to wash their hands. That is one of the things we have taught the, the teachers here today to go back and teach the children they know how to do. And while the government is also providing the infrastructure to wash hands, you know, in those schools. I think with all this, you know, I think the school is ready to resume. For our part, the special advisor to the government public health assures the safety of students and both teachers in resumption. Lagos State Government, with the Ministry of Education and support from Ministry of Health, has put everything in place to make sure that your children will be safe. We are giving each school a thermal scan, not because we want them to use it to screen for Ebola, but so that any child that may develop fever in school will have the appropriate um, instrument or equipment to check and do the right diagnosis. The training in the eyes of the state governments will reinforce the premium placed on people's lives and the importance of education in the development of the country. Omotayo Alo, Call TV News, Lagos. The Lagos State Government has authorized the use of the first consultant hospital, the health facility where the first Ebola case was recorded in Nigeria for business as usual. The State Governor, Babatunde Fashola, who paid a visit to the hospital, reiterated the position of the health experts that the hospital is certified fit to treat both in and out patients. The hospital played a major role in the containment of the spread of the deadly disease through one of its major consultants, Ameyo Adadevo, who eventually lost her life to Ebola. We must be cautious. Understandably, public health issues remain and will continue to remain the burning challenge in a growing global population. And therefore, our basic sanitation uh, uh, habits must improve 
our professionalism must improve, our sense of duty and dedication must improve. If we take on assignments in whatever sphere of life, we must just discharge those ass assignments with dedication. You heard the testimonies yesterday from the doctors themselves, survivors, and other medical uh, personnel that it was also a doctor who just refused to give up on them, Dr. David. And, and this is the way it must be. It, whether you're a journalist, you're a soldier, you're a police officer, you're a footballer, just do what you do with dedication and all will be well. The 2014 annual conference on corporate governance put together by a non-governmental organization, the Society for Corporate Governance in Nigeria, centered on collective responsibility and positive values, which speakers say determine good governance. Oluwashi Adeguke has the details of the story. The conference is tagged leadership and governance in the public sector. The Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashala says leadership is a matter of value and character. We all know what is good leadership and what is bad leadership. Again, there, there, there doesn't seem to be anything new about human behavior. I don't think there is. All of what we are seeing today have happened in the past. The butchery in public office, murder, rape, killing, honor. It's happened before. And those of us who have followed the history of human civilization we will say that there is nothing new. The actors are just changing. Good values will produce good leaders, and we must be the leaders that we want to be. Representatives of the Central Bank Governor, Dipo Fatokun, says people must work together to achieve good governance. Knowledge is not the exclusive preserve of any individual, and by extension, any government agency. Public sector leaders, therefore, cannot assume an egotistic pedestal. Rather, they must encourage a robust discourse towards achieving consensus of matters of public policies. Organizers at the event say good governance in the public sector is a collective responsibility which eventually determines good leadership. A notion held in some quarters that the Oshun State Governor Raparek Basholam is preparing a grand design to turn the state into an Islamic state has been dispelled. This is by no other person than the general superintendent of the Deeper Life Bible Church worldwide, William Kumunyi, who paid a cursory visit to the governor in Oshugu. Rashid Rashid has the story. With all sobriety and thoughtfulness, we say thank you for bringing such a man to lead our state at this time. That was the humility displayed before God and the symbol the state government has been preaching about religious tolerance. Kumuyi did not beat about the bush about his mission to the state, just as Arabi Shala believes Oshun will no doubt be blessed by the presence of the man of God. Looking at about 22 years ago to now and seeing how my relationship with your church and your person possibly affected me, I would not my mind that my meeting you again will have a very, very impositive impact on my life. particularly tax Kumi on the need to pray for the development of Oshun, adding that the state is also poised to surpass the achievements recorded in the first term of his administration. The, our wish is to put into those four years programs, policies and projects that will only be possible in 20 years. Mm -hmm. Overwhelmed by the hospitality and warm reception, Kumui, an indigenous of Ilesha in Oshun, says Arabe Shala is not pursuing any Islamic agenda as believed in some quarters. I don't know what they have observed or what they have seen. What I have seen is that um, 
the governor of Beni Aregbeshola is a governor for everybody in the state. And um, I believe that he's uh, a man for everyone. And he wants the progress of the whole state, whether you are Muslim or Christian or non-Muslim, non-Christian. The governor promised to attend the church crusade as an evidence of the peaceful relationship between Muslims and Christians in the state. Rashid Rashid, Court TV News, Oshobu. Take a short break and when we return, we'll take you outside Nigeria and on sports as well. Glad to have you join us on another edition of The Political Arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. If you are a sitting governor and the opposition is able to stomach structure against you, that means you are wicked to the people. They gave me 20 minutes to move or they will shoot me. He has no chance for survival. If he likes himself, this is the best time to get out before it very The PDP is a rule of right to his faith. To anybody who thinks that government will fold his hands and allow miscreants to take over the streets of Mosul State and cause havoc, he's deceiving himself. The good, bad, ugly, and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9.15 p.m. on 40 News. Welcome back to the news and outside Nigeria, Scotland has said no to independence. The historic election will keep Scotland as part of the United Kingdom. But there are some significant changes still coming to the region. Scotland had a chance to break apart from the United Kingdom, but the public has spoken and the vote wasn't even that close. About 55% of Scottish voters rejected the referendum to make Scotland an independent country. 45% said no. British Prime Minister David Cameron is now expected to go through with his promise to increase Scotland's power. Electoral officials say almost 85% of the registered voters of Scotland turned out to make their voices heard. And in sports, as Villarreal striker Ikechuku Uche continues to prove to be Nigerians' best, most prolific striker abroad with yet another goal in his club 1-1 draw, in the European League against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Former Super Eagle striker Jonathan Akpoguru has questioned Uche's continued absence from the Super Eagles team. Uche has not played for Nigeria since it fell out with Stephen Keshi at the last Africa Cup of Nations in South Africa, and Keshi even claimed a few weeks ago that the former Recreativo Uva of Spain forward always wanted to be begged to play for his country, even though the 30-year-old subsequently denied it. And that's it on the news on the hour. Please do join me at the top of the hour for more. I am Sabena Izoku, and thank you very much indeed for watching.